Hello, my name is Steve, and this is my anchor test video number 111. What I've got for you today is the beginnings of a study that I am making on the effects of adding a cable pennant between anchors and their roads. And the idea with this is a cable is going to be much easier to slice into and penetrate into the seabed, uh, easier than chain, and the theory is that perhaps anchors will develop more holding power or just better performance uh, with a cable pennant. Uh, this is really only applicable to smaller anchors because uh, we're, not, we're not using a windlass to haul them in and you can just simply hand in the cable part of, this, of the road. Uh, larger boats though with wildcat style windlasses that are mounted somewhat close to the bow roller, they really won't be able to use this because uh, well, wildcats cannot get a grip on cable. Uh, there's a lot of work boats and a few pleasure boats, however, that use a drum style windlass where the entirety of the road is wound onto a drum. In that case, uh, sometimes the entirety of a road will be cable. Uh, but in any event, I wanted to check and see if there's any performance advantages. So I've done a series of pulls with and without the the, this cable pennant. Um, I chose two anchors to begin with with this testing. Uh, this is a Viking 7, weighs about 12 pounds, and this is an Excel number 1 at 17 pounds. Uh, so far I've only done testing in the sandy mud substrate, and uh, I'll just quickly uh, run through these clips for you. I won't make it too long of a video, and we'll come back and analyze and see how much or if this cable pennant makes a difference. Okay, we'll get things started with the 12-pound Viking. Uh, no pennant installed, just uh, 12 feet of chain and the balance is nylon. Do a couple of these pulls just to establish a standard. This anchor is very consistent. It, it repeats its performance very, very similarly each time. Got the camera speed at double time. I'm ramping up power, uh, 10 second intervals uh, between power increases. I do the exact same procedure or protocol uh, each and every time for all these tests today. We notice that the chain really does not bury much. Uh, the camera tether is attached oh, just very, within a few inches of the chain attach point at the anchor and uh, that was a very consistent uh, depth of bury. We saw the roll bar the whole time. Here's a second try. Same exact scenario. No pennant and uh, same thing, we see the roll bar continuously, we have continuous motion as, as we ramp up power, and the anchor releases at exactly the same amount of thrust. It was uh, both times it released at 690 pounds. And again, I just don't see that chain descending into the seabed. So now we'll try the same anchor, but with six feet of that cable pennant in between it, the anchor and the chain. Same scope. Same depth, same seabed, it was at the same day. I just did it right back to back. And what we're looking for is more of the anchor buried or more of the pennant buried. And I just don't see it. I see the exact same uh, depths of bury and very, very similar uh, holding. Uh, on this first pull, uh, motion really starts going fast at the same 690 pounds, but it didn't release until the next power up at about 750 pounds. So, okay, maybe we can say on this one the pennant helped a little, although I just don't see any depth of bury difference. I see the same same bit of roll bar showing and really uh, certainly less than a foot of the of the leader was buried. Here's a second try with the with the cable pennant and uh, visually it looks exactly the same. Uh, this time, however, the anchor did release at less thrust. It was 630 pounds. And if you average those two numbers, uh, 750 and 630, lo and behold, you end up with the same uh, release number as with no cable pennant. That's 690 pounds. So the conclusion for this anchor in this seabed, the addition of the pennant has made no difference whatsoever. Now we'll try the 17 pound Excel with the same protocol. We'll start off with just the uh, chain and nylon, no, no cable pennant. 
Still at five to one scope in the same seabed. We'll try to establish a, a kind of a standard, what it can do. And unfortunately, the anchor is not terribly consistent in its uh, high, high holding powers in this seabed. I discovered this a while back. It was it was actually during these the, the research for this pendant that I discovered that the anchor will sometimes roll on its side and release. Other times it remains upright and very buries very deeply and makes a fantastic amount of holding power. Even when it releases on its side, it still makes really good power. It's uh, 750 pounds of thrust uh, for both of those quick releases. The anchor got. Uh, retrieved and cleaned off and redeployed here and for this pull it did stay upright and, and developed a tremendous amount of holding it's very little motion at the at the maximum thrust of this test boat which is 1150 pounds um, I'm gonna say maybe two feet of chain bury look off to the left there and it's about a bit more. Those other the the first pull, I'd say maybe only about one foot of chain bury. I really don't have any idea how deep the anchor is buried, since there's no roll bar sticking up. But no doubt it's it's down there a ways. And here's a third try with no no pennant, just just the chain and the nylon. And this was another case where the anchor was on its side a bit, and we did have a release coming up here again at 750 pounds. So in a way, it's very consistent when it when it does its thing on the side. It has very consistent, uh, very high holding power, and then when it is upright, it's just astonishing holding power. Per perhaps the most of any anchor in this size range. And now we'll give three pulls on the Excel with the pennant installed. Again, I got the camera up at two times speed just to keep the video short. And if you look closely here, you're going to see a partial release. And this happened at about 500 pounds a pull. Right there. But did, it did uh, reset immediately. This time it stayed upright and it held the full 100 and, or 1150 pounds of pulling power of this boat. So that's perfect. So let's focus on how much of the cable buries. Again, I'm just ramping up power here. Uh, it's a 10 second count for each power setting. Now we see that cable bearing further away from where the camera tether is attached, which is, by the way, right there at the head of the anchor. And the cable disappears from our field of view. I don't have the camera far enough away to, to know how far. So what I've, what I've concluded that is the, the cable was buried at least three feet. Here's the second try with the pennant installed on the Excel. Initially here we don't see a whole lot, but the anchor does does do another release, uh, this time at about 600 pounds, and it uh, leaps leaps forward enough that we, we get out of that turbidity and we get to see, see the bottom a little better. But the anchor resets immediately upright this time and develops extremely high holding power. It uh, holds up to holds the full 1150 pounds. We're going to watch that cable there in the top of the screen. It was visible there a moment ago and now it is gone. And once again, it seems to have buried further and deeper than the without the than without the pennant. And that's a good thing. You'd think that this is going to relate to higher holding power. But it does not. We, 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 we know the anchor is very well buried. We, we've got a plunged camera, but the anchor does release here before the 32nd count of that max 1,150 pound pull. Here's the third and final try for the Excel with the pennant installed. 
in the lower left part of the screen. We can still see the road as I'm ramping up uh, the thrust. Uh, not a lot of motion during this pull. The anchor stayed upright and very well buried. Uh, it did release, though, at the final power setting. But up until then, it was just great. Now I think we see... Yeah, the, the road has now disappeared. So once again, I'm going to call this 3 feet plus of road berry. We do get the plunging camera once again. That's a result of Seabed kind of grabbing a hold or wrapping around the, the tether for the camera. It's a pretty sure sign that the, the, the head of the anchor is uh, more deeply buried than when the camera does not plunge. But uh, I, I hold that final power setting for 30 seconds, but before it could get there, this anchor does do a quick release and then I, I discontinue the test. Well, after analyzing the footage, it's clear to me that I am not done testing the cable pennant concept. Uh, the Viking looks like was that was not the right anchor to choose for that sandy mud, because uh, at five to one scope, it doesn't seem to bury much more than the end of the shank. So it won't matter what what kind of road you use. Uh, this would be a great anchor to test the pennant concept in the softer mud because it does penetrate very very deeply there. Uh, often, uh, many feet of the chain will be packed with with mud at that site with your with the roll bar style anchors. Uh, the Excel, it does penetrate deeply in the sandy mud, but its erratic nature uh, at the higher holding numbers means I just can't nail down whether or not the pennant uh, did any good or not. Uh, so for the sandy mud, I think a future test will be to use, uh, say, the spade anchor. It tends to be much more consistent in its higher holding, so should be able to get some better numbers. The one conclusion that we can draw from these tests was that the pennant road did penetrate deeper than chain. That was with the Excel. And what I noticed was that on the three pennant pulls with the Excel, that was the only time that the camera plunged downward. Uh, that happens when the camera's tether gets sort of captured by enough seabed and down it plunges. Uh, that's, that's a real clear sign to me that this anchor was deeper. Uh, unfortunately, I just couldn't tell whether or not it resulted in more holding power. So I'll, I'll, I'll be retesting different anchors. Uh, speaking of which, I just picked up this 18-pound Danforth High Tensile. It's on Craigslist for $25, so I couldn't pass that up. Okay, that's all for the pennant testing for now. There'll be more down the road, but uh, next video, I'm going to show you some extensive testing I did on the surface condition of this Fortress FX-16. And what prompted it was that the original anodizing from the factory was starting to wear off and get spotty. There was even some corrosion sort of sticking up, thus making the top of the fluke a little bit rougher. I have been noticing that this anchor's holding is fairly erratic. Uh, it would either hold just only a couple hundred pounds and, and release, or it would dive down and create uh, over a thousand pounds. So I got to thinking, maybe the condition of this surface smoothness or roughness was having an effect. To test that, what I've done is I glued sandpaper to the top of the fluke in its entirety and done a bunch of pulls. Did a bunch of pulls in the natural, just the state it's in, and then to simulate how it was from the factory, i.e. very smooth, I laid the anchor flat and poured clear epoxy on top of the flukes, let it just flow out nice and smooth, and then did a bunch of pulls. I also did a bunch of pulls with the mud palms removed. So a uh, whole series of pulls with four different conditions, and I'm going to be a bit of a tease. I'm not going to tell you what happened. You'll just have to tune in next week to find out the results. All right, thanks everybody for watching. Thanks to all the supporters. Uh, I did pick up six new patrons here in this month of April, 2021. So big thanks to those new supporters. As always, anchor safely and so long.